Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. An unfortunate part of life is that we're never really taught how to process our emotions or the purpose they serve in our lives. And I believe that that's the root of a lot of the world's problems today. I already began to talk about this on an individual level in some of my videos, so I'll leave links to them in the description below if you're interested. But I wanted to take an even deeper dive this week, because we as individuals can't stand to ignore our emotions any longer. If you're familiar with somatization or you were introduced to it through my videos, then you know that unexpressed emotions can manifest themselves as dis-ease in our bodies. But the thing is that the link between the mind, body, and emotions works both ways. Yes, thoughts and emotions can stay lodged in our bodies if we don't take the time to process them, but fortunately, we can also use the body to improve our emotional well-being and stop the mental chatter that keeps us from enjoying life to the fullest. In my video last week, I told you guys about the first somatic experience I ever remember having. But the truth is that that was only one or two weeks into my breakup, so I still had a lot of grieving, healing, and processing to do. One experience sticks out in particular. I was in my room and I could tell that I was feeling off. My mood was heavy and I felt blocked. Whenever I feel like this, I lie in bed a lot longer than usual. So that's what I was doing that day. But eventually, I, for some reason, felt called to sit up and press a point near the center of my left shoulder blade, which I felt was particularly tight that day. And to my surprise, I started crying. Not crying, sobbing. And I couldn't stop. But I felt called to maintain pressure on that point, despite my crying. Eventually, I did release it, but the tears kept coming. At this point in my post-breakup experience, I had come to, ex to expect waves of crying and grief. So I let it wash over me until it subsided on its own. And when it did, as is usually the case when I let myself cry, I noticed that the tightness in my chest was gone. But this time, I noticed that the tightness in my left shoulder blade was gone too. And like before, my breathing started coming easier to me and my mood improved. My lethargy lifted and all of a sudden it seemed I had the energy to continue on with my day as normal. That day, a seed was planted. I had a similar experience a few months later at a time where I was concentrating on strengthening my solar plexus chakra. I had just finished doing yoga and was in the middle of my shavasana when, again, all of a sudden I felt called to sit up and start massaging the center of my right foot in line with the ball of the foot. And no, I didn't cry this time. <laughs> Instead, once I was finished, I felt called to look up reflexology points on the feet. And then I started crying. <laughs> Out of shock, probably, but also because I felt like I had just been given a meaningful experience. You see, I found that the exact area I had been massaging is known to be connected to the solar plexus. That day, the seed was watered. The last experience I wanted to tell you guys about happened about two years ago, which marked my second heartbreak. This time due to the early termination of a bike tour I had poured my heart into. As I've talked about in some of my other videos, near the end of 2020, I was in a car accident that broke my left shoulder blade. Luckily, my initial recovery was really strong, but just when I thought I was done healing, I started experiencing spasms in my right arm. 
According to my doctor, this was likely due to an overcompensation of my right arm because I had to rely on it more heavily than usual during my recovery. Amongst my treatment options were taking a mix of muscle relaxants and pain relievers, even though the spasms weren't painful, physical therapy, and acupuncture. I didn't like the idea of relying on medicine. I never really have, especially knowing that it probably wouldn't work to fix anything at the root. And even though I had already been through a span of time where I did physical therapy to regain full range of motion in my left arm and it had worked, I wasn't too keen on doing it again because it would have felt like going back to square one. So all of this led me to start doing acupuncture. And anyways, I had cursory knowledge of it and had always been curious to try it. So I saw it as an opportunity to strike it off my bucket list. And luckily, within a couple months of treatment, my spasms, the spasms in my right arm started to go away. And the more I kept going back and experiencing the benefits of it, the more my curiosity developed towards acupuncture. Eventually, I started looking up different trigger points and their known effects on the body. Slowly, I was exposed to more and more anecdotes and evidence that the points on their bodies that acupuncture targets aren't just random and that they're actually linked not only to specific organs, but also to the emotions, ailments, and maladies that assail us on a daily, daily basis. One day, I also recalled the two experiences I just told you guys, and I concluded that all of this information must be related. I had the conscious thought that these weren't just coincidences, and that this information had been stored in my body in two very specific areas. So, with that theory in mind, I wanted to verify whether the point I had pressed in my left shoulder blade had already been identified by traditional Chinese medicine as a known trigger point. And it had. In fact, I identified it as SI11, which is a major point along this small intestine meridian. What's even more interesting is that the small intestine meridian is known to rule clarity, judgment, and discernment, and that an imbalance in it can result in Restlessness, anxiety, depression, moodiness, irritability, an unclear life path, and melancholy, to name just a few. It's also known to be affected by connection and or separation, and to affect the mind, joy, and confidence. If you've ever been through heartbreak, then you know that this is also an exact description of what it feels like. That day, the seed bloomed. This was the beginning of my earnest, rather than just cursory, interest in acupuncture. And ever since then, I've been verifying whether where I feel not is a known trigger point. Almost every time, it has been. And this is what leads me to believe that trigger points and knots are one and the same. Next week, I plan to focus more heavily on acupressure. So if you're interested, make sure to tune back in. Or check out the playlist I linked in the description below for similar videos. But as for right now, thank you so much for watching. I feel so honored to be able to share my thoughts and experiences with you guys. If you like this video, please hit that like button. It lets me know that you like the content that I'm putting out and I really appreciate it. Also, if any part of what I said resonated with you, then please consider subscribing to the channel or sharing the video so it can reach more people. Also, make sure to comment down below what your take on acupressure and or acupuncture is. One of the reasons I wanted to start doing YouTube was to be able to create and hold a space where we could have conversations on topics like this and where we could learn, share, and be inspired by each other. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say, and thank you again so much for watching. 
I'll see you next time. Thank you.